So I recently did a few videos on this laptop here that's now on sale for only 60 bucks. It comes with Windows 10 preloaded, has 4 gigs of RAM, and it runs Linux great. But after making those videos, I found out there were newer revisions that have a few slight changes. So if you recently purchased this laptop or you're thinking about buying another one, stay tuned to find out what has changed in the latest models. Hey what's up everyone, this is Phaser Tech with a quick update on the Evolve 3 Maestro laptop. So if you haven't seen my first two videos on it, you can see them here. And when I first made these videos, the laptop was selling for 80 bucks, but now it's on sale for only 60 if you're lucky enough to live next to a micro center. I first did a review on it almost two months ago, and then followed that up with a guide on how to install Linux Mint on it. At the end of the guide, I mentioned that some users reported audio problems after installing Linux, but at that time, nobody was sure why it worked for some and not for others. Well, thanks to some viewers and users on various forums, we were able to determine why. It turns out there are multiple hardware revisions of this laptop, and as of right now, there are three known versions. To find out which version you have, you need to check the sticker on the bottom of the laptop. The original version will have Maestro eBook 11 as its model, while the second version says eBook 11 v2. And the most recent version will say MEB 11 v4. The v4 at the end suggests this is the fourth version, but there doesn't appear to be any models ending in v3 that I know of, so I'll just call this the third version for now. I'm not aware of a v5 at this time. The first two versions share the same SKU, so there's no way to tell them apart by the box. You'll have to open it up and check the laptop itself. It appears the third version has its own SKU, so it's easy to identify this one before you buy it. Now let's talk about the differences between the three versions. I personally own the original version, and that's what I based the guide and the review on. Everything works flawlessly in Linux except for one catch. The Wi-Fi drivers need to be manually installed, but the process is very straightforward as I demonstrated in the guide I made, so this isn't a big deal. The original version also featured an LTE card with a SIM card slot, but a common upgrade to do on this laptop was to replace the LTE card with an M2 SATA SSD drive. This allows you to have a second internal storage device that can be much larger and faster than the built-in 64 gig flash drive. I'll leave links in the description of some compatible drives. The second version of the laptop is almost identical to the first version except in one area, and that's the audio chipset. This one uses an Everest chipset rather than the Realtek chipset found in the original. The Everest version currently doesn't have driver support in Linux. Chances are this will be added at some point to the kernel, but it's hard to say when. Also, people who decided to do a fresh install of Windows are also reporting no audio as well with the V2. I'll leave a link in the description for what appears to be the correct driver, but I don't own this version so I haven't tested it myself. Finally, the third version of this laptop lacks a feature that made it really stand out from the rest of them, and that's the LTE card it came with. Not only is the LTE card missing, but the slot itself was removed as well, meaning you can't install a second SSD anymore. It would have been nice if they simply removed the card instead of removing the whole slot entirely, since I feel that upgrading the storage was one of the selling points for this laptop. Although it is disappointing, I can't say I'm really surprised. Companies are constantly trying to find ways to cut costs, and this thing only costs 60 bucks now. This is a feature that you wouldn't expect to find in a normal price laptop, let alone one in this price range. Also, I believe the third version uses the same audio chipset as the V2, meaning audio isn't working in Linux at this time, but I haven't confirmed this yet. So if you own this version and have tried Linux, feel free to chime in with a comment and tell us how it went. So hopefully this video was helpful for you if you're thinking about picking up this laptop. I still think it's an amazing value, despite the changes in the recent revisions. At only 60 bucks for a fully functional laptop, it's still hard to complain. 
But anyway, thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe to help the channel grow. Also, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. I have a ton of projects lined up covering a wide range of topics from programming to circuits to 3D printing and more. So please stay tuned. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.